Welcome back to the School of Calisthenics with Tim and Jacko. Tim, tell them what we've got for them today. Today we're going to take you through a full bodyweight workout that requires no equipment whatsoever. Let's get started. So the workout is going to be broken down into three different sections. We're going to have some upper body exercises, some work for the core and lower body movements too. And in each of those sections, there's going to be three exercises that we'll show you. But then the fun's really going to happen when we link those three exercises together to give us a great full body workout. Let's get started. Tim. So before we dive into the main body of the workout, we're going to get warmed up. Jacko, take me through a little bit of a prep session. So we're going to do a full body, so we need to make sure we're warming up the entire body. Tim's going to show you through a little sequence and you can follow along. We're going to do it once and then you can maybe go through that a few times to really get your temperature up. So the first one, we're going to attack the lower body, what we call or has been dubbed the world's greatest stretch. So Tim's going to lunge forward, hands go down, back leg is straight and glute is on tight. Hand then goes across and elbow, if you can, touches down at the bottom uh, next to the foot. You're going to feel that in the hip there. Then we come through, he stretches back in that front hamstring here as he lifts the, uh, the bum up, comes back down to his lunge position, bring the core and trunk upright, squeeze the bum underneath so he's in a nice straight line. And from there, he's going to trek back up into a standing position and swap legs. Just show one from the side, Tim, so we can see that on the other leg. So, We've got to make sure we do both sides. So now that you'll see that back leg super nice and straight and long, glute is switched on, hip flexors getting stretched. That arm on the inside comes down and touches the elbow and then come back up, straightening that front leg as much as you can to feel a stretch in the hamstring before coming back up to your lunge position and then coming into standing. So from your world's greatest stretch, once you've stood back up and you've done each leg, we're gonna go down to the caterpillar. So Tim slides his hands down onto the floor, starts to walk out, and he's coming to a press-up position, maintain um, trunk alignment with glutes and core locked on. But from there, he's gonna walk a little bit further, pushing away with the shoulder blades. It's only warm-up, so you don't need to go as low as you can, just starting to warm things up. Walk the hands back, and then that's our little caterpillar. Now we're gonna rotate to one side, our round the world push up, always pushing down strong through the shoulders, not slumping down. Midsection can stay tight to control that. And that was then our round the world push up. From there, he's gonna walk his feet um, or his forward or his hands backwards to try and make a piked position. And then from here, he's going into his Pluto sniff where elbows come down behind, head comes through, we're scooping down to the bottom, maintaining a straight body line and then driving back up to our start position, maintaining good shape here. We get to work on some of that shoulder flexibility, thoracic spine, spine extension, and controlling midsection and core as we come back up to our start position. A little stretch on the hamstrings as we're walking out of those caterpillars as well. So that is a little sequence we're gonna do as part of our warm up. We're gonna make sure on the uh, world's greatest stretch, we're doing both legs each time, and then working through the rest of the sequence building up to doing between five to 10 reps of each and a couple of rounds of that and we should be good to go and nice and warm for the full workout. So let's start this lower body sequence, three exercises that we're gonna do individually, show you the coaching points and then we'll build them together for a nice flow movement at the end. So the first one is gonna be our lateral lunge. Jacko's gonna take a wide balance uh, position here with his feet and he's just gonna sit down onto one side the hands can come up in front to counterbalance if you need to. Looking to get as much range of movement as he can and get as low as he can. Trying to keep those feet facing forwards, not twisting out to the side. And he pops back up and he can do both sides on that lateral lunge position. If that's a little bit difficult and you find the range of movement hard, you're just gonna narrow your base a little bit. Just to regress the movement and then work through the range of movement that you can control. Same principles, just control that position and make sure that you're feeling nice and comfortable when you drop into that low shape. To make it a little bit more difficult, you can actually throw a bit of balance work into this. So back in his original position, Jacko drops into one side. And he's then gonna pop back up and he's gonna try and... Ah. <laughs> Yep. He's going to come up there and now the balance position. So a little bit of control of shifting your, your center of mass over your base of support, really good to build in that lateral stability and also to challenge your balance. Those are two things we want the lower body to be able to do. Just proving I can balance. Our second lower body exercise is going to be a split squat jump. 
So we're gonna start in a split stance lunge shape, working these lunge patterns a little bit more. And Jacko for exercise one is just going to pop through and just not worry too much about moving the legs, but just trying to get up off the floor. You can see he's doing a great job of using those arms to help him balance. If you find that a little bit difficult or intimidating, you don't feel confident to jump, you can just work through a standard lunge. Same thing, work those arms into that balanced shape as you come through and just get into a nice low lunge position. This might be a nice little prep if you've never done any plyometric work before. If you're looking to make it a little bit more difficult and get the heart rate up or build some more explosive power in the lower body, we're going to try and split jump these legs so they're going to change in midair. So he's driving high, pushing hard off the front leg, getting as high as he can, and then split those that stance in the midair to land on the opposite side. Again, our mechanics working exactly the same. There's three little lunge progressions that we can do to get those legs working, build some explosive speed, and just get, if we want to, a bit of heart rate going as well. So the final exercise in our lower body sequence is gonna be the push-up burpee. Jack's going to show you the main exercise and then we'll give you a progression and regression as we have done before. So he starts off in his push-up position, he drops down, he comes back up to his feet, and then we're just going to look for a small hop. So you lower yourself back down, chest to the ground in a full push-up, and then pop back up. If that feels a bit difficult, we've got a regression where we can start to take a bit more time to get onto the floor, drop the knees on the ground, use the support from the low boy for the push-up, and then stand back up to your start position removing the jump so we're not having to put that explosive component in which can be a little bit difficult for some. If we want to go to the next level and we want to make it a bit more difficult, we're going to make it more explosive. So he drops the ground, full push up and then he jumps and then we're going to throw a little tuck jump in there as well which is going to force you to start to think about getting a bit higher, moving faster, making this movement a bit more explosive. That's going to be a great little exercise if you want to start to build some more plyometric exercises into your program, but these are great for getting the heart rate up, so we're ticking a couple of boxes with our push-up burpee. So let's put these three exercises together into a sequence and start to combine this into a nice little lower body workout. So Jacko is going to start in his lunge shape, he's just going to go through a one rep each side. You can scale this as much as you want to by doing more reps, we'll just show you one so you know how these fit together. So there's the lunge done, he now pops into his little split jump, he goes one each leg and then he's going to move straight into his push up burpee. He completes the movement with a little pop off of the floor, as we say, Build those through. If you want to do 10 of each, you can do. You can scale it to as much as you like, and that's going to fit around how much training time you've got and what your individual goals are. And there is a three movement lower body sequence to get you started for a low, low equipment workout. We're going to move on to the core exercises now. We've got another three to put together. Again, we'll show you them in an individual sequence, and then we'll link them together into a flow pattern at the end that you can combine when you're ready. So, Jacko is going to start with a candlestick position. So he's going to come onto his back, his hands out to the side, trying to drive his feet up as far as he can, as he try, trying to get that lower abdominals working to push the hips nice and high. To make that one a little bit easier, he's just going to stay in a more tuck position. He's just going to drive those hips up, but not making the legs up as straight as he was doing before. Staying in a tighter ball is going to make this a little bit easier. And if he wants to make it more difficult, he can challenge his balance more by bringing the hands in away from this wide support, a bit narrower, still working through that high shape and rolling down nice and controlled into this low extended body position with the feet out straight. Playing around with the amount of support and the lever length is going to be a nice little way to progress or regress the candlestick movement. The second exercise is going to be a bodyweight squat and we've got a few different progressions to play around in here. So Jacko is going to start with his feet facing forward about shoulder width apart, hands up on the back of his head and now he's going to drop into a nice low squat position. He's looking to keep the knees tracking in line with the middle of the foot and we're trying not to allow those knees to come together. Chest should stay upright and sitting down into that movement and cracking a worn up between his butt cheeks on the way back up. We don't want to see any real excessive arching in the back, so try and keep your squat technique as clean and as tidy as possible. If you wanted to make that a little bit easier, you're just going to work through a range of movement that you can control, and we can bring the hands out in front to start to counterbalance the movement as well, making it a little bit easier to sit back. But just prioritize the foot and the knee position, straight lines, and we're going to work on this upper body as we start to, to control that better position with the hands out in front of the body. 
To make it more difficult, we're gonna move through to a single leg squat so Jacko can come through again. Knee track is straight forward in line with the middle of the foot, back staying straight and upright, and he's controlling that position, making sure he's moving with precision and control in this nice stability, challenging single leg exercise. And those are our three squat progressions. The final exercise in our core movements is gonna be a tripod. This is a great exercise to start to challenge not only the shoulders and midsection, but also the ability to control force throughout the whole chain. So Jacko comes into a straight arm press up position, hands together to make a diamond and a wide base with the feet. He's staying nice and tight in his midsection, just keeping the bum locked on like he's cracking a walnut, ready to take a punch in the midsection, and this is gonna stay nice and stable. His job then is to, without rotating, bring one hand up into a single arm wide position, squeezing through the shoulder blade, pointing the thumb to the ceiling, and he comes back down and changes sides. You can see within this, he's not rotating or twisting the shoulders or the hips at all. He stays perfectly flat to the floor. To make this one a little bit easier, rather than having the arms straight, he's just gonna come through and touch the shoulder. So we're decreasing the lever length, just making that a little bit more straightforward. Again, keeping nice and stable through the lower body. And the progression to make it a bit more difficult is bring those feet together a little bit, decrease the base of support that you've got, making the stability demand higher and work through into straight arm position. This really gonna, is gonna challenge the rotational stability that you've got to perform this movement with good quality and nice control. So those are our three core exercises. Now we can put those together into a nice little flow pattern. Again, we'll show you one repetition of each, but you can scale this to put in as many as you want to, to bring that workout into a longer format if you want to. So Jacko starts standing up. He drops to the floor through that squat pattern and goes into his candlestick. He's driving the hips up nice and high. He then rolls through and sits up. A nice little mobility challenge there as well down into his over into his, um, his body weight squat, keeping nice control position there, stands back up, and his job then is to walk down into his tripod, wide base, taking the arm out nice and straight, controlling the stability through the chain. Put those three movements together, you've got a nice little workout to do, bringing in lots of different positions, lower abdominals, particularly through the candlestick, the core exercises that are going to be working, or the core is going to be working hard through our squat to maintain good positions and linking everything together. And then we get some more isolated function for the whole chain as we get our tripod nailed down at the end. And that is our core workout without any equipment. Finally then, we'll look at the upper body and again, three exercises that we'll break down and show you the regressions and progressions of each before working them together in a nice little sequence. So the first one is going to be our pike push-up. So from there, to press up position, Tim walks himself into a pike position, sticking the bum nice and high in the air, screws the elbows so they point backwards when he comes down, head comes down and makes a triangle with the hands and he drives back up on the same line that he came in on. So these aren't that easy, so if, they're, if you're finding that difficult, we're just gonna worry about the lower. So we're gonna lower down the control over a course of five seconds on that way down, get to the bottom, puts the knees down, and then come back up to that start position. So it would be a lower five, four, Three, two, one. Knees go down on the floor, back to your start position. That's a way to make it a little bit easier. If you want to make it a little bit harder, we're actually going to pause at the difficult position at the bottom. So he comes to make a triangle with the hands, holds there for one, two, and then drives back up. So a little pause at the bottom each time. So holding there, one, two, head just off the floor. Maybe, you've, maybe you've, your quiff touches the ground and that's only it, and then drive back up. That's our little uh, progression and regression for the pike push-up, which is our first exercise. The second exercise is gonna be the pillar roll, which is gonna incorporate a little bit of trunk lateral um, rotational stability, as well as what's going on at the shoulder. So Tim's gonna make a pillar position with his arms crossed over, forearms parallel to each other, pushing down strong through the shoulders, maintaining that nice strength uh, through the midsection with glutes and core locked in place. From there, he's gonna rotate onto one side, feet ever so slightly spread apart to give him a little bit of base of support, onto one side, pushing away and control back down. So he's going from front facing or facing downwards to a completely side on position. If you're finding that difficult, what we're gonna do is spread the feet wider so you get a bigger base of support. So you're gonna find it easier to rotate through and as you build up your strength and shoulder stability, you're gonna find that you'll be able to get those feet closer together. Once you get really good, your progression is to rotate onto one side and see how you stack the feet on top of each other. A much smaller base of support is gonna make the the stability and control and balance demand as you come through at the trunk to uh, control that rotation, as well as the shoulder stability when you're pushing down 
into the floor through your shoulder rather than slumping and having that shoulder up by the ear. We don't want to see the shoulder slumped or the hip slumping down on this. So there's three options for you. Pick the one that fits your current strength and movement capabilities. The third upper body exercise is going to fire up that posterior side of the shoulder on the back of our body where we're going to go into our reverse tabletop position. The first option we're going to have is with the body or legs straight, fingers pointing backwards. Tim's going to squeeze those shoulder blades back, imagine he's pinching a pound coin between shoulder blades, lift the chest but maintain a nice straight body line, squeezing core, squeezing glutes to get up into that shape. He's going to hold and squeeze at the top for three seconds and then he's going to control back down. When he's at the top, he's trying to squeeze those shoulders back, not having the shoulders rounded and forward. He's going to squeeze them back and push down into the ground to lift himself up. So he's getting retraction of those shoulder raises to help with that elevation. If that's difficult, we're going to shorten the lever length. So the knees become bent now. And all of a sudden, we've because we bend those knees and we shorten that lever length, there's a little bit, the, the distance between your base or two points of contact with the floor, your base foot is a little bit more uh, advantageous for you in that shape. To make it more difficult to progress it on, we're going to load up one side. So he's going to find that top position, but he's actually going to take one arm off, stay pushing down through that shoulder so he's not slumping, and he rotates on to the other side, trying to maintain a nice straight body position rather than shifting the hips or rotating through the trunk when he's in that shape. And then by the fact that he's only on one side, those shoulder stables are having to work really hard to maintain that position where he's pushing away rather than slumping down into that shoulder. And that is your progression for the reverse uh, tabletop position. And that is the final of our three exercises that we're now going to link together. So linking these three exercises together now for our upper body sequence, Tim goes into his pike position. So bomb nice and high in the air, comes down into his pike push-up. He's going to do two of these because when he comes then down into his pillar position and walking the hands out, he's going to do two where one to one side. It's nice to stack in the feet. He's chose the hard variation and then one to the other. There's his two reps. And then from there, he's gonna rotate all the way around, fingers pointing backwards, lift the chest, hold for three seconds, two, one, control back down, and then he would go back into his second rep before ro rotating all the way back round into then his pike push-up position, and he can start his second round of that sequence. So it's the pike push-ups, it's the pillar roll, and then it's the reverse tabletop. Again, we've given you three variations to do, one easier, a middle, and a, and a, a progression. You choose the one that's suitable to you. Um, and that is a nice final uh, sequence or flow of uh, three exercises to go into your upper body uh, training as part of this full body workout. So there we have it, your full body workout with no equipment needed at all, covering the lower core and upper body and how they are integrated in together nine exercises, each with progressions and regressions, uh, so you can choose the one that's appropriate to you and put them into those little sequences and flows. Now, I know what you're thinking, how many reps and sets do I need to do, Jacko? Well, Tim's gonna tell you. You can scale this wherever you wanna go. If you wanna do one and you wanna just do one of each exercise and move through and just do nine on the balance, you can do that. Or you might choose to do five or 10 repetitions of each movement, and you might do two to four different sets. The great thing about these exercises is it really highlights the importance of moving the entire body Body. The kinetic chain is an integrated unit. And lots of options to, uh, to sort of move these into different positions and, and train different areas where you want to prioritize lower body, core, or upper body. It's up to you. Have a play with it. See what works in terms of how much training time you've got. But the reality is, if you want to do a 30 minute session or you've got five minutes, this workout is going to fit into one of those different situations. So you've always got something you can do which is going to move your whole body and get you moving better having more fun and getting superhuman strong. And that is what it is all about, our philosophy on training at the Scorecast Center. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have done, let us know in the comments. And if you want to see any more uh, workout videos like these, do let us know anything that you want covering. Put those in the comments and we look forward to helping make more videos and more workouts and content that is specific to whatever you guys and girls out there need. Thank you for watching. Until next time, class dismissed.